लगा नहीं लग गया So we just saw this patient uh, trans abdominally. Now we would be doing her trans vaginal sonography. Uh, it is always mandatory to do trans abdominal first so that we get a global view of the uterus and ovaries. Now, uh, before we do the ex start the examination, uh, we already know the history of the patient that since one year she has not got her periods. And she's 38 years old, and uh, she has two children. So she's worried why she did not get her periods. Her UPT is negative. Before we start the examination, we again put our presets on the gynec preset. Uh, where is the arrow? Where is? Can you please put it on the ed gynec setup? Adnexia. Adnexia. Yes. Thank you. So we have put the machine on gynec setup, these, it helps if we are in the right presets because uh, all uh, this monitoring we don't have to do, it's done by the company. Nowadays we have very good machines. Now coming to transvaginal probe, we have, you can, as you can see we have two types of uh, TVS probes. Uh, one, this one is the uh, this is a 4D, 3D, 4D probe, volume probe, and this one is the regular uh, 2D probe, both of different frequencies. So we can make a choice as per, we have already seen the patient from abdomen, so we know how her uterus is, and accordingly we can select the type of uh, probe if we have the option. So now, uh, First, we should understand how to hold this probe. We put some jelly and then we will apply, jelly has already been applied and now we put this condom on this. It is essential to put condom on the transvaginal probe because uh, no infection should go from one patient to the other and uh, this should ideally be done in presence of the patient so that she knows that you are using a new uh, condom and that it was not used on the previous patient. Now, we, uh, you all can see this groove over here. This is uh, the standard marker for the probe. The portion here, this is the tip of the probe. All the images or the part which is coming in contact with this tip adjacent to this uh, groove would obviously be the anterior portion or the right portion of the patient. Anterior structure and right side of the uh, structure. And this would be displayed on the screen as which whatever comes on top would be the anterior and whatever comes on th this right side of the screen if you are facing the patient, your left hand side would be actually the right side of the patient. There should not be any confusion. Otherwise, we can miss out if we go inside the, once we are inside the vagina and if we happen to remove our hand from this marker, we can get lost. So, once you have placed this thumb on this marker, it should not be removed. This grip should be firm till the examination is complete. Now, when we introduce our probe inside and see the um, uterus. The uterus measurements are taken in long axis and in the short axis. The short axis is also known as coronal view and so we have to take measurements in both the axis. We all know that the uterus is not a fixed structure, it is mobile. So, once we go inside, we have to do a lot of movements with this probe. One movement is like going in and out. Other movement can be, you know, side to side. Then third movement is rotatory movement like a screwdriver. And 
then once you have come adjacent to what uh, you are in one of the furnaces you have to assess the sliding sign that means whether the structure ovary is fixed uterus wall is fixed to the rectum when we want to rule out uh, and uh, deep endometriosis and all we have to do sliding sign so for that you have to do to and fro movements so there are a lot of movements to be done in with this probe and <laughs> so now we will start the examination we will give proper position to the patient there is uh, there are various methods in which we give this position that is lithotomy position where the patient is lying supine then we ask the lady to fold at the knee joint and uh, some places have specially designed tables where you can have a c cut so that you can have you can maneuver your hand but if the if there is no c cut no problem just raise the buttocks of the patient you can put two three pillows below the buttocks so that it is little raised and you get a uh, good uh, area to manipulate your hand movements or then if that is also not possible if the patient is not willing for that you can turn the patient to one of the sides and then examine so you you have to think on the spot how and what position you need to give because our aim is that uh, the uterus should be seen in full length on the screen so i think we we'll need a 2 minutes break to give position to the patient we had already done the abdominal sonography in this patient now we would be doing transvaginal so will you give uh, you can just give her position so it is seen that uh, like for retroverted uterus transvaginal sonography is really a boon every patient uh, for uh, pelvic examination must must undergo transvaginal sonography if she is a married lady we do not do transvaginal sonography in unmarried girls uh before we do this uh procedure we should take consent of the patient and we should explain to the patient how we are going to do and what we are going to do so that she is cooperative and obviously again if a male doctor is doing this sonography a lady attendant should be in the room uh, or else at least relative of the patient should be inside uh so we have now uh given position to the patient here yeah. can you please take this in your hand uh is ye wala probe le lo i would like to use this volume probe if possible and uh, would you come this side i want one of my students to be here so now we have put jelly inside the probe so that there is no air column and we will apply some jelly from top also uh, when we are doing ovulation study we avoid putting jelly because uh, it might hamper ov uh, this uh, sperms may get killed so but this is a simple gynec case now i've placed my thumb and put it in so now we don't need the camera this side we need it on the screen so that whatever image we are getting will it i need to sit down but can we just pull this chair a little yes thank you this probe is connected oh this this lady had drank lot of water so we are seeing that bladder is now uh, again filling up but in a way it is good because it is giving us the reference point of uh, of anterior myometrium the so obviously this is the anterior myometrium which is adjacent to the bladder and this is the endometrium and this is the posterior myometrium and this is obviously the bowel uh, before we start we should always start the introitus so as we introduce the probe in the long axis we can see the bladder we are this uh, anechoic area which is there here you can see it's the urethra 
we should try to see the urethra and this is the vagina again and this you can see is the anal canal this portion should always be seen when we start the examination okay now as we are introducing a probe inside we are getting to see the cervix and these tiny anechoic areas which we are seeing are the nebothian cyst in the cervix now this has come the whole uterus has come we should try to magnify our image increase the depth and try to bring the whole of uterus on the screen so that we have a very good view we should adjust our gain so that we can see the myometrium endometrium the cavity fundus cervix very nicely uh, ideally now i'll freeze this image ideally um, we should be able to uh, uh, get the fundus on the right side of the screen it is not wrong to get it on the left side either but conventionally we try to get it on the right side the fundus and the cervix on the left side so we can see the bladder the fundus this is the internal os and this is the cervix now when we want to take measurements we take from fundus to fundus to cervix so advantage in transvaginal sonography is that we can see the internal os very nicely so if at all there is some pathology uh, or we want to see the ratio of utero cervical ratio we can conveniently see because we can then measure like this and then take another measurement from here to the uh, to from internal os to external os so that we know what is the ratio like The, this ratio changes from right from uh, infantile uterus the shape is different then multiparous it is different the ratio is different and once it becomes postmenopausal again the utero cervical ratio changes we just heard in the talk so now uh, like we had seen this uterus from above also but in transvaginal we can appreciate this junction endomyometrial junction endomyometrial junction much better so when there is any case of adenomyosis we can this interface is lost while taking measurements we should take measurement from this to this end we should not include the halo so here uh, endometrial thickness is around this measure it yes so it is coming around 2.3 mm so so if we add up from anterior and posterior in such cases we have to add anterior myometrial thickness and posterior myometrial thickness to tell the whole thickness of the uh, endometrium so now what is the posterior uh, endometrium you should take it near the fundus you know here yeah. not anywhere ha huh. so this is 2.7 so i think it was 2.3 and 2.7 so it is almost 5 5 mm so which is definitely thin for her age and the day of cycle so now this is her uh, right ovary coming up now we now we are going see okay i just forgot to tell something we had seen the uterus in long axis and right at this end we turn our hand um by 90 degrees so that we can get a coronal view sometimes we need to use our uh, left hand on the abdomen to get a clear picture we press from above and see and i think we can magnify over here a little and increase the depth so that we can take a transverse measurement please take a transverse measurement now from so her uterus size is normal okay so and so now we will enter one of the fornices i am entering in long this is the long axis of the uterus 
but this I was in the midline. Now I am entering uh, in the right fornix. We can see the vessel, and now we will try to trace the ovary in the right fornix. We are expecting to see the right ovary in the right fornix. Here it comes. Uh, now we sh the focus point should be brought down where the ovary is, and we should decrease the angle of the probe also. Now we do not need to the angle. The scan area can be decreased so that the clarity of the image is good, and we can zoom our image. Now we can appreciate the ovary better. Now ovary measurements should ideally be done in dual uh, screen. So press the dual screen. Dual screen. It's here. Yes. So now we will freeze in the this image, and now take the second screen. I will turn my hand by 90 degrees now to get the long another axis of the ovary. Yes. Freeze it. Oh, take a bit. Again, I think it's not very clear. Again, we defreeze it. Yeah, this is better. So now measurements are taken in both the axes for the ovary. The longest axis is considered. So no, till here it is. So it is almost set. Then this is the second long axis. Huh. More, more, more till here, and then right angles to either of the images in either of the images uh, at the maximum point. So, like here, we have taken, and this is almost this much. So, set. So, we have these three values for the ovary. Oh, I think we have missed out on up uh, this thing. Okay, okay. So um, uh, the volume did not come directly. Ideally, the machine settings should be such that we get. On uh, taking these three values, we should get the volume. Uh, so again, we are taking the measurement. So 1.5 cc is the volume of right ovary, which is definitely a small-sized ovary for this age. And follicle-wise, also we are not seeing much follicles. Now we have entered the uh, left fornix. We can see the cyst again. We will uh, try to focus this area so that we get a good image. And uh, We, we uh, when there is a cyst, we try to see the contents. Also, we can put color to see if needed uh, and confirm that that it is uh, ovarian origin. And oh, now we should measure this cyst. So maybe because the right ovary is small in size. That might be responsible for her delay in periods, and the endometrial thickness is not much. So even if she is getting one or two spotting, she must not be realizing that it's a period. But her gynecologist will see into it. We have to just tell our findings. We are not the treating doctor. So uh, I think this is fine. I'm withdrawing the probe. And this completes our examination. Okay, thank you. Uh, we uh, do have few more cases, but before we take.